The school to prison pipeline continues to be a huge issue when it comes to our public education system. More and more minorities are being targeted by school police as hardened criminals when they've done small things, minor offenses like not showing up to school. And as a result, they get prosecuted and get sent into the juvenile justice system. In fact, if you look at the numbers, 40% of students expelled every year are black and 70% of those students who are arrested are either black or Latino. So there's also a race issue involved in this case. Now, AJ Plus realizes that this is an issue and they did a really, really great investigation into this and they found an interesting solution to it as well. Now, a real quick video from AJ Plus kind of explaining how devastating the school to prison pipeline is for some students. Take a look. I was born into a homeless family. Um, and, and I grew up in the slums of San Francisco. I mean, I've been on probation since, I know I mentioned earlier, since eighth grade. The first gun I ever had pointed in my head was when I was 12 years old by a police officer. Typical story, you could say. That's the first time I guess I was perceived as a problem. I got involved, I got caught up in the system, then they sent me to group homes and they arrested me again. I spent 90% of my teenage life in juvenile hall, in the juvenile system. Next you know, I'm 17 going on 18, I'm still on, I'm just like, oh my God, like, these guys will never let me be free, they'll never leave me alone, any little thing. Oh, you missed school, I'm lucky. Uh, and that's where the school to prison pipeline starts. So there is uh, an organization out there that's trying to help students who have been victimized by the school to prison pipeline. It's known as the Center for Academic Reentry. And what they're trying to do is basically help these students get back into society, finish their education. Um, AJ Plus's video actually has really great details on that and you should check it out. We do have a link in the description box so you can watch the full video for more information about it. But it's kind of incredible that you need organizations to help students get back on track after they've been victimized by a system that's completely failed them. I'm in a period of my life where I'm reminded, I'm always reminded of how similar I am to everybody else. Mm -hmm. like, the things you think about yourself that are exceptional, it turns out they're not exceptional. Everybody can do it, right? Uh -huh. um, like, you know, like being a parent, right? Yeah, like literally tens of millions of people are doing it right now, and they're fine, right? <laughs> right? You're nothing, your story is not exceptional. Except some people's stories are exceptional. And so what, what our world, the pr what, our prism is just not, it's not the same as everybody else's, and this seems obvious, but... That kid told the story, a grown, young man now, he's mm -hmm. like, that started the first time I had a gun pointed at my head. First time, I've never had a gun pointed at never. my head, and God willing, I'm never going to have a gun. You've never had a gun pointed at your head, and God willing, never. and most people here have not had a gun pointed at their head. Just what we think is normal is, is what we think is radically abnormal is yeah. completely normal for so many people. I, very quickly, I'm going to unbelievably relate this to Mad Men. But at that Hawks game that I went to, I told the story also on Old School last night. They introduced John Hamm. He was at the game in Atlanta. And they were like, you know, and they're like, they're the crowd, everybody, John Hamm in the house. And they mm -hmm. show him and, they're, and he's like, and he gets like a, a polite applause. It was a good applause. And then like 10 minutes later, they introduced T.I. I can't name one T.I. song. I barely know who he is. And I know he went to prison. Lost I mean, the shit. roof came off, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh, I got to hurry back to L.A. to get back to do the What the Fleek Bad Bed recap because everybody wants to know. Nobody <laughs> wants to know. Nobody cares. <laughs> nobody watches. But, you That's know, but, the, but I, I know not nobody watches, but I mean, like, but in, in the in here and, and here's where I sound like the right wingers in the Volvo driving, arugula eating mm -hmm. New York Times reading world. It's all Mad Men. Right. Mm -hmm. But to every young person, they don't. Mad Men, one, it's a television show. Two, it's about 40-year-old white guys, you know. But T.I. makes relevant music. He makes relevant yeah. music because it touches on issues like the school-to-prison pipeline. You know, he doesn't directly say it in his lyrics, like, I am now rapping about the school-to-prison pipeline. But he talks about an entire community that gets victimized by institutional racism. And the school-to-prison pipeline is a perfect example of institutional racism. It has school administrators and school police singling out very specific groups of people and demonizing them for behavior that they deem deviant, but a lot of teenagers do it, right? So we did this story a long time ago about this, um, it was like a cash for teens uh, scandal. It was a judge who was 
basically prosecuting students for doing things like missing school, skipping school. They would spend time in a juvenile facility as a result oh, of that. Oh, he was that. getting paid and by And he was the, getting paid on the side. That was in Pennsylvania. That was in Pennsylvania, and he, yes. And he went to prison for, he going to prison for a long time. He is, sentence, yeah. and I'm glad that he is. And even though there are, I feel like there are other cases like that throughout the country, not necessarily judges that are getting paid, but teachers, administrators, basically adults, who treat these students as if they're like hardened criminals because they've done something somewhat bad. I'm not going to say that skipping school isn't bad, but let's say they accidentally bring like a pocket knife to school and they get caught with it. Oh, well, we're going to prosecute you. You're probably going to try to harm someone. And then they spend time in a juvenile facility. Re Do you think that that actually helps them in any way, shape, or form? No, that actually does turn them into hardened criminals. There shouldn't be an economic reward. There shouldn't be a, a capitalist component to prison. Yeah. It just shouldn't be. That simple. Anyway, uh, again, AJ Plus did some really good reporting on this. Please check out the video in the description box for more information and subscribe to their channel. They're doing some really great work.